presenting the brand new video edition of IndianTelevision.com's executive dossier which throws light on the progress of companies directly from the mouth of the executives. In this episode of the dossier, Seema Singh speaks to Sony Mac Senior VP and Business Head Neeraj Vyas about his take on the current trend of blockbuster movie acquisition, the supply demand chain and much more. The movie game essentially is a demand supply situation. You see the trend. You kind of, uh, you know, you, you get a you get a feel of what the film is likely to be, who the actors are, what the crew is, who the director is. Uh, you know, what's his past record? What is the genre that he normally makes? Okay, and then you decide to buy or not buy. We look at the production house very importantly. You know, see how stable they are, how good are they at marketing their films, how good they are at releasing their films. You know, do they create a good amount of buzz about their films? All of these factors come into play, but uh, you know you have limited money, so that money is not growing. On the other hand, uh, the prices uh, are going up. Everybody knows that acquisition is becoming more and more expensive. You know? So uh, you know you, you've got to be as judicious, as prudent as possible when you buy. I don't think anybody has uh, any kind of guarantee beyond the point uh, that a particular film is going to work uh, or not work. Okay. Uh, there are situations where uh, a film has worked in the theatre circuit, has been a monster hit, but has not worked on TV at all. And there have been situations where a film has not worked uh, you know, in the theatre circuit, but has worked reasonably well on television. We kicked off post-IPL with Jab Tak Hai Jaan, we got the Lash. Ashiki 2, Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, we have Murder 3, we'll have Shootout at Vodala, we'll have Once Upon a Time in Mumbai Dubara, we'll have Ek Thi Dayan, we'll have Gippy, uh, we'll have uh, Krish. Of course there is a sentiment on price, and anything absurd now, I mean, it's, it's not possible to pay that kind of money. Because even if you amortize the cost uh, for five, over five years, okay, uh, in terms of recovery that you make, uh, sometimes it's not possible, the match doesn't work out. So, yes, obviously there is, there is always a cutoff. It's always bought by a network for the network. It's not only Max, any network today, whether it is us or whether it's Star, or whether it's Z, or whether it could be Viacom. Uh, films are bought for a network. No movie channel will be able to sustain the cost that it is bought for. It has to be played across the various channels of the network for the cost to be amortized over a number of screenings over a number of years. That's right. the only way you start, I mean, you kind of break even and make money. At sales revenues, uh, between uh, all three of us, and um, including uh, the others, would be close to around 13 and a half, uh, 1400 crores. I have only heard about it, like all of us have heard about it. After that, there has been no clarification by either the actor or his, uh, you know, his PR firm or even the channel, you know. So nobody knows what the modalities are. Nobody knows what the working is, you know. So I really don't want to comment on it because mm -hmm. after that one press release, nobody has seen anything happen. So frankly, I think all of us are only speculating and I wouldn't want to add to the speculation. It's just a little grey right now. There is a large issue that's coming up as far as the, the, the supply chain is concerned. Okay, and I, I kind of see it a little differently. Uh, simply because the kind of films that are being made today, okay, and if you look at what's been happening since the last three to four years, especially, okay, our ratings, you know, movie channel ratings come from the smaller towns. Okay. We basically cater to the CDE audiences. Male is the core TG that we have. All of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the kind of films that are being made today, okay, are uh, creatively better, technically sounder, performance-wise better. Uh, there is a lot of boldness in the films. There is a lot of boldness in the attitude of the film. Okay. So while all of this is good, probably from a cinematic point of view and from a theatre-going a person point of view. Okay, it's, it's a great cinema experience today because you are getting to see films which are edgier, bolder, you know, racier. Uh, but this does not work on TV. I think you have a very relevant example. Dirty Picture. 
Okay, would have won awards, uh, made uh, this girl's career, hmm. uh, the the girl's one, career. Yeah. Uh, so nice film. Okay, bold film, interesting film. You know, raunchy film, uh, bold dialogues, bold situations. Something that you would probably go and watch in a multiplex and feel good about it. Would you sit and watch it with your parents? Yeah. That's the point I'm making. So eight out of ten films today are being are in from this kind of uh, you know work zone. Back in the 70s and back in the 80s and back in the 90s, okay, you had your commercial cinema being driven by certain kind of directors and producers. You had your Manmohan Desai school of filmmaking. You had your Prakash Mehra school of filmmaking. You had your Karan Johar school of filmmaking. Okay, and so on and so forth. They made films in a particular genre for a particular kind of wider cinema audience. Okay. Then you had your art house makers like the Sham Benegal and you know the others who made art house cinema, Jabbar Patel and all these guys, Govind Nilani. They catered to smaller audiences very clearly. So there are two separate you know demarcations of people who wanted to watch their kind of films. Okay. Today, while it's great for the industry and as a as a cinema buff, which I am, and I'm also a cinema student myself, it's great to see a Vishal Bhardwaj make a film for uh, Ekta Kapoor. Okay, so it's her commercial sensibilities and his creative sensibilities coming together, and they make a ethi dial. It's great to see, uh, you know, so many mergings of, uh, 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 you know, Yashraj, for example, he made certain kind of films. Okay, but today, uh, you know, if you look at the kind of directors that Arvind Chopra is working with, he's working with Manish Sharma, he's working with Habib Faisal. You know, uh, these are directors who don't conform to commercial Hindi cinema. They have a mind of their own. They have a treatment of their own. They have a message to give. They have a language to say. In the kind of cinema they believe in, okay. And these are the films that are being made right now. So it's more meaningful cinema, okay. It's probably more relevant cinema, given the the, the social realities of the countries today. But they don't work on TV beyond. It. We have a relationship with most of them. We have key relationships with Filmcraft, which is Rakesh Roshan, mm -hmm. with Yash Raj, uh, Karan Johar. But uh, there's no exclusivity. I don't think the industry works like that. It's finally boils down to who pays the highest price. Only towards probably the end of the year is when we have clarity on whether you know, that shift should happen or not. Like I said, uh, you know, six needs to be distributed well. IPL is a very interesting, is an important government. Uh, from a network point of view, it's the biggest thing that we do in the year. So the channel that it's on should have the bandwidth to be able to reach out to so many people. Right. So once that is established, we take that call. Probably a little later in the year. The way we present our films, uh, the way we market our films, the way we present our promos, the way we package our promos, uh, all of this comes into play. You know, the marketing that we do outside of the channel, the way we like said we present the film. Uh, it's it's virtually like, for example, what we're doing with Ashiki is like we're virtually re-releasing the film. Today, I think the challenge for all of us, uh, you know, if we have to retain an element of freshness, because see, the film comes onto our channel almost after two to three months. You know, people have seen it, people have seen it at home, people have seen it. You know, there is piracy which is rampant. Mm -hmm. You know, people have seen it everywhere. They have seen it in theaters. Now, the challenge to get somebody back home, back and watch a film again, means that you have to get that person excited about watching something that he's already seen. If he has not seen, great, because then you stand a better chance of getting the person to watch. Okay. But you need to get the finer elements of the film that you need to promote, which means that you should be able to understand as a marketer, as, as a channel person, that what are the, the small little lovely beautiful hooks that a film has, you know, which are happily promotable, in a way that a person feels enticed and happy to come and watch it again. It's a very close game between any three of us. So uh, we call me QLC ships happening. Uh, it'd be silly if I said that I'm the undisputed leader. It'd be silly if even somebody else says that they are undisputed leaders. Because uh, you know this is a shifting game. Uh, the genres, uh, you, know, you know, too small for for people to take clear leaderships. So right. it's it's a game that shifts on week to week. And, uh, you know, I mean, there may not be a clear leader for the entire length of year. There will be leaders for a few weeks. So we, possibly split leadership across weeks. I think quality is the key differentiator as far as I feel. 
packaging, promotion, marketing, all of this uh, at a very high quality is what Max stands for. It's been great. It's been uh, it's been rocky at times. Uh, it's been we, we've seen ups and downs. We've seen competition rush past us. You know, all of this has happened. But I think that's true for all of us in today's uh, television environment. Uh, every Thursday is is a new reality for us. Uh, I think we gauge we get gauged uh, on a weekly basis, uh, which which is uh, you know good to keep us uh, you know alert and alive all the time. Uh, but I think the key is to be consistent. A lot of large production houses and movies are going to need uh, a lot of innovative ways to market their films. So what we did was we got Ranveer and Deepika to basically uh, talk about the film, which is Hijawani Adivani. So we promoted their theatrical release and in bargain, we also got them to do a channel program talking about the new releases of Max. Then we get star faces okay, on the channel, uh, which, which kind of uh, takes the perception of Max, uh, you know, being the big channel with the big faces, uh, you know, further ahead. And at the same time, it gives a platform for a new film, you know, to get uh, Max to promote, uh, you know, the film with the reach of as, as much as we have, you know. So, Today, like I said, apart from GECs, we are the only ones who have this kind of reach. So it becomes a very happy mutual association in that, in that sense. So going forward, we plan to do lots, lot of such things. On Twitter, uh, we for the first channel to have live tweets when we did uh, Jatta Khajan. Okay. Uh, we got as much as 2,500 responses. Okay, but live tweets had never happened on a movie channel earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've done that. We've had a Twitter contest for Talash. So Digital is a massive reality for all of us. I think all of us are going to really take to it like, you know, fish takes to water. As we get into a digitized environment, uh, which we have got into, mm -hmm. and as we get more paying subscribers, you know, as, as declarations happen, as we get more pay, paying subs in the next, uh, maybe I think, uh, you know, anything between 16 to 24 months. So it's almost, you know, year and a half, two years. Uh, you know, all 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 movie channels, Max of course, will, will become a very very large player in the, you know, in the state of things within the, the network. I think it's not only from a channel point of view, but from a genre point of view, which is uh, the, the Hindi feature film genre. I think it's the biggest blessing that is going to happen to the genre. Uh, you know, there's something that you really need to know that. If you look at the, the reach numbers of this genre, you know, the number of people that each of these channels reach, reach numbers on the individuals reached okay, is probably at par with every GC in the country. Uh, all of us are in the vicinity of almost anything between 48 to 52% reach. So whether it is me or cinema or gold, okay. My reach is not very different from the SAT's reach, or my reach is not very different from the you know, Star Plus's reach. The total number of people in the universe that the genre reaches is the same, or is marginally smaller, probably. Marginally. Or probably, let me just say it's probably the same as a GEC. The advertising time that the genre has it is going to come down. The biggest problem that the genre had was the time spent. So our time spent was close to say around 65 to 68 minutes a week. These are 120 to 130 minutes on the GEC. Now there are clear reasons. GEC shows you original content every day. Mm. Okay, people get to see fresh work every day. Out here there are running things all the time. So that's one big reason. Okay. Right. Second reason was that the number of amount of advertising on GEC was limited. The amount of advertising on our channels was far away. So if the ads, ads come down, the ad time comes down, you know, the viewer tends to stick on and watch more. So in that sense, given the fact that the reach is already there, the time spent will only get better. Right. Yeah. So we become, I think the gain for this genre is going to be immense, if you ask me, every which way. Stickiness goes up and you know, reach is already good. So it becomes a very, very viable uh, you know, mode for the advertisers going forward. The time spent for everyone is going to get better, but which means we're going to have a very valid reason to ask for a rate. It's going to be survival. The other reason is that traditionally, 
uh, the, the Hindi movie channels have been sold at a very, very, very low rate. And that correction should have happened many years back. It has not happened. So probably the right time to make that switch. But a rate high is a rarity for him.